Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Quantum Bridge. Hopefully again, but welcome to new viewers as well. Hello, Casper. Hello, very you like me to say hello. <laughs> I like your bit. That's very positive for you, thinking yes, of right. uh, new viewers. <laughs> and somebody who is returning is Karina. I think it's a, a hat trick now, isn't it? Three times. Three times. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. It's all right. Brilliant. Thank you for coming back. Pleasure. And I don't want to most of the time, but there we go. So <laughs> it's always good when the guests show up. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Casper, what is the topic? Social media, I think. Yeah, so uh, despite the fact we're on a, a type of a platform <laughs> ourselves, so it makes that a rather strange paradox that we're uh, going to uh, look at the area of social media and, and, you know, not necessarily the dark side of it. We don't do any salacious stuff on this channel we're not into clickbait and all that stuff. But at the same time, I think there are really interesting and varied experiences that people are having with this sort of this foray into the digital world for us all, which for most of us is still fairly new. So, um, yeah, it's lovely to have Karina back. <clears throat> Welcome again, Karina. And um, yeah, I, I know that we've had some exchanges, so to speak, offline about this and uh, love to have your thoughts about how things have been for you since our first recordings which seemed like ages ago but actually weren't but you were very kind in coming on very early when this was a brand new channel so thank you again for that um and yeah how, how are things with you and maybe you can start by going into some things that you feel are interesting in the in the digital world for you and that you've seen sure yeah sure so yeah, it's, it's great. Um, it's great to be back. So maybe for the people that haven't met me before, um, I'm a Middle East strategist. I talk a lot about the Middle East and what the perceptions are over here in the West and how we can bring our cultures um, better together. And the whole, like my whole mission is basically designed just to open up um, our worlds and just bring a better understanding to um everyone contrary to what you see sometimes in the media because this is not always true so i always talk from my experiences from my travels from any of the experiences i had with businesses out there with clients from the <clears throat> region in particular so i talk a lot about these kind of subject um i'm very active on linkedin and I've had a couple of posts that have gone kind of viral on LinkedIn. I mean, when I say viral, you know, one post had probably about half a million views. Um, and that was one about the World Cup. And it started off very positive initially. And uh, was about the World Cup in Qatar last year in December. And then it probably about, I'd say, I don't know, Six to 12 hours in, it started turning and um, and all the trolls came out. So I know there's a lot of people who always think, oh my God, we want to go viral. This is so good. Everybody's going to know me. But you know, I think what you sometimes are not prepared for, mm. how nasty people can be and how also like how uneducated people can be. Mm. And they, and, and for me, it was so interesting because, you know, if you look at places, for example, like Twitter or Facebook or uh, Instagram I think people can hide behind a handle where on LinkedIn it's normally a much more professional network and also like you see people's job titles and things like that so that really surprised me that there were a lot of people out there who had very strong opinions and also people um where so for example I had one guy that um worked for a hotel and very clearly that hotel had a lot of high profile Middle Eastern clients and he was very um I would say very racist against them and I basically wrote back and I said well I'm sorry but I think if, if your hotel sees what you are talking about I think you're going to alienate some of your clients so I think he then came to his senses and then he deleted all his comments but it's but it's so to me I was like wouldn't you think before you say something like this so it's just really odd so I think that was my one learning curve from these sort of viral posts that it's never just it's never just all good there's always somebody who has something to say and some people are like downright like 
rude and stuff and you had to like sometimes I also delete I started deleting comments because they were just they were just really bad and I'm like this is not the place for it or they were insinuating something else so yes so I'd say my first thing with social media would be virality is not all that people think it is <laughs> are you most is, I know you have a YouTube channel as well don't you yeah, yeah. so is it just YouTube and LinkedIn that you mostly do no no youtube we have youtube um we have instagram we have facebook we have tiktok um linkedin yeah i i mean to be honest i think on our youtube channel we haven't done as much recently i think our main platform to be honest is linkedin and um yeah i think that's where also like a lot of people see what we do it's interesting also because i think on linkedin you can also see posts or and you don't necessarily know who has seen the posts because you know people don't always comment or or like or anything so so you don't know i mean of course you have a generic views that you that you get but you don't know and and it's very interesting because a lot of people I feel like on LinkedIn because when I when I meet people in real life people are like oh my god we love your LinkedIn posts and I've never seen them anywhere they've never liked anything they never commented on anything I'm like where have you been you know I mean I appreciate the comments but it's very bizarre yeah. so so yeah I would say on LinkedIn it's interesting but I think with some of the other ones so for example with with Instagram it's interesting that you sometimes, you know, on Instagram, there's a lot of different features. So for example, you know, like you can, you can block people and, and I've had people before, I mean, this was probably going back maybe like one, two years ago, people that I used to work with that suddenly out of the blue blocked me. And I was like, what just happened? I'm sorry. And then they unblocked me. And when you unblock somebody, then basically, if you, like, for example, if I had followed you on Instagram, and then you blocked me, and then you unblocked me, then I wouldn't follow you any longer, just purely because you had blocked me. But when you block me initially on Instagram, I don't see any of your posts, or I see nothing. Even if I look for the profile, I can't find the profile. So it's very interesting. So I had some people that, yeah, blocked me, then unblocked me. There's, there's been people on LinkedIn that, that have blocked me. I mean, I don't know, maybe some of the posts that I do trigger them. So fair enough. But it's just very odd. Are you and, mostly... these, and, the, and these were always people. And this is the funny thing. These were always people that when you would meet them in real life, like they were not like some people that are just randomly met or something but there were people that when I met them in real life they would be like you know all you know like nice to my face and I'd be like what is going on here so it's very strange I think people they, they do that they just sometimes they forget it's like when you um because I've done some online retailing type thing you'll find that when a customer contacts you the, half the time they won't even form a sentence maybe and you think well I think because they see it as a, like a digital interface that they forget that a human is going to read that at the other end so there's a different approach there which is um you know that, that that is noticeable I would say but on your account are you I mean obviously you're presenting your company I believe most of the time but are you posting sort of personal comments or are you keeping it roughly to the business type I think every now and then I think um I think I post I post something that probably will surprise people probably not so much on LinkedIn I would say because I think on LinkedIn you get censored very quickly yeah. um on Instagram is interesting because I think sometimes I think honestly with with some of the things when I've reposted certain posts, I wonder if sometimes if I got shadow banned because what they call shadow banned when like your views drop dr uh, drastically because I've seen this quite a bit and I used to get a lot more views and now not so much, but I'm like, okay, whatever. A naughty fine. book, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> But what is also interesting is that people think, A, that everything happens on social media is in real time, which it never normally is. 
and B, that that is what your life is. Because the amount of people that have said to me, you know, when I've seen them, um, and they just looked on my social media and, and they said, oh my God, but you're always traveling. Are you just in London now? And I'm like, no, I've been in London for months. They're like, yeah, but I see all your pictures from the Middle East. I'm like, guys, have you heard about content recycling? I mean, these are pictures from last year or pictures from two years ago that were just topical to the subject, but it doesn't mean I'm there all the time. Yeah. So it's just very odd that sometimes people think, you know, everything that you see. And I think at the same time, I think with social media, it's also this, nobody posts if something happened that they were unhappy about or very rarely, I think, or if they had a failure or they had a bad day or something like that. So of course you always just get the polished version on social media and everything is always great. And you look at other people's lives and I think that's the trap that a lot of people can fall in. They look at other people's lives and they think, my God, they're always traveling. Like, when are they ever working? They, you know, they're doing this, they, they're going there, they're living this glamorous life. But I don't post about, like, when I have to wash my son's, you know, school uniform day in, day out. You know because... why this is, though, Karina? It's because yeah. the one that you really missed out was, was Twitter or, or X now. Oh, There's we can talk about Twitter in a second, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's full of moaning and uh what people are doing throughout the day it's uh it's, it's only it's the only one that i'm really familiar with um, on twitter on twitter yeah it's, so i have to tell you i make a confession on this podcast i've been on twitter for quite a long time but i have i have an account that nobody will know it's me i i i have a secret account on yes. twitter yeah. just purely because I, a I don't want another another account to produce content for and I have an official profile now but I don't really do that much on it to be honest and what I find interesting is what Twitter used to be and what Twitter is now are also two different things I, I feel like a lot of there is a lot more openness now that Elon Musk has taken over and, and there's a lot more things that you see yet you still don't see everything and you know, I think as much as everybody says, like, don't succumb to the fear when, like, I don't know, let's say the mainstream media, like, now is saying, oh, my God, there's not a COVID variant. I'm like, I'm so over this. Like, I'm not interested. But at the same time, at the other spectrum, you have the people, and they're very active, I think, on Twitter predominantly, that say, my God, everything is going to be doom and gloom, and you better gonna stock up because there's gonna be um there's gonna be no food in the stores and you better have food at home and that's the other spectrum but what they both of them have in common is that it's basically creating this fear mm -hmm. and I found for me and this is just speaking for me if I've been on Twitter for too long it really like puts me in a in really I don't want to say depressed because it's not depressed but it puts me in a really low mood so I've made a conscious effort to try and kick the app off my phone because I'm like, this is just not serving me. Like, the, the, like, there's no point. Everything that I read on this is just doom and gloom, whether it's from the one side or whether it's from the other side, but neither of it is very beneficial to me. Mm. So I just kind of feel, oh, God, you know, like Twitter for me is this is, is this really triggering up, I think. And it's, yeah, I don't know. The, yeah. We tried to, that was, you know, to be honest, that was one of the reasons, yeah, there's, there's many, but it was another factor why we started this channel, because like I said, there was a lot of this negativity, this fear stuff, and we're like, well, can we create a space that it's just a little bit more calm, you know, and the, the energy is different, <laughs> so it was something, can we, can we counter that, you know, get in the middle there somewhere, and yeah, like you say, it can be very noisy on either side, just yapping at each other. Yeah, it, it it can be, and you really need to try and find, you know, and I think that's what a lot of people also say with a lot of the shift that we're undergoing. I think you really need to try and up your energy, and and that's not easy if you constantly get bombarded with both of these messages from both sides. What I found really interesting. Um, there um there is an astrology 
lady on YouTube. She's based in UK, in the UK. She's called Pam Gregory. I don't know if you heard of her. Yeah. She's amazing. Like, like I started listening to her YouTube because a lot of it made a lot of sense, but she also talks a lot about like, we have to raise our frequency and we have to, you know, as a collective, try and shift the energy in a, in a better way. And I found a lot of the things that she said resonated a lot more with me than some of these doom and gloom mongers on Twitter. I, was like, I just can't cope with these people. So, so I think, yeah, I think you have to be really careful with what, you feed your mind and I think social media can really suck you in and I think there's different things on different platforms I think yeah on Twitter it, it's very it can get also very aggressive very quickly on Instagram it's this everybody has this fabulous life except for me and on LinkedIn it's normally I've made um I don't know 25k within four weeks and and this is what I can help you with now and it's just like, oh my God, you know, like, where do you even start? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's, um, it's, I'm feeling a lot of resonance with a lot of this. Yeah. I, I think my feeling about it at the moment, at least, um, is definitely with X, for example. Gary handles our um, now X was Twitter account. And yeah. I really can't spend much time on it. Uh, energetically, I feel exactly the same, I think, as you. Karina mm. it's yeah. it's not easy you know and it yeah and you have to really I, I I think I can't remember who said that but but um some teacher said you have to stand guard at the door of your mind and that really resonated with me you have to be really very specific of what you let in because that can really have a massive impact on the way you see life and, and you see things and and whichever so yeah I think it's good not to spend too much time on on all these platforms I think I mean I hear of people that spend eight ten hours on social media and I'm like this is just crazy yeah. this is just not real life it really isn't I mean it takes a great level of discernment but it's a it's a good tool i find i mean i've learned a lot but you have to get into the habit of almost curating your own feed or timeline yes not interacting with those negative ones and you know you'll see the same people posting all this so like you get used to just skipping past you know <laughs> reading it a lot quicker and the more you sort of you know like or interact with the things that do resonate with you it, it it's like that sort of feedback loop then it's almost like the more you use it the more your timeline will, will clean up you know yes it, it, I, I think that's where casper get because he just dips in and it's like oh my god you know <laughs> uh madness <laughs> yeah whereas where i've spent a bit more time on it, it's a lot calmer on my feed and yeah, no, I I, ag yeah. I agree with you on that. And I think, again, going back to your point about like you have to curate your feed. I think if you have certain people in your feed that trigger you, whatever that may be, like you you feel, I don't know, let's say not worthy because you see their posts and they're on another vacation, you need to get rid of this. <laughs> you need to like disconnect, block, whatever, yeah. get rid of it because it's not serving you, you know, or if there's always somebody who comments very negatively on 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 your content then you just need to you just need to block them and on the subject of blocking I actually have another um story to tell you so it was really interesting so on LinkedIn um probably about a couple of months ago somebody tagged me in a post a company and I was like okay let me have a look and it was all about culture and whatever and then I looked a little bit more into the company because I wanted to see what they were doing. Huh, turns out they were trying to do the same thing as me. And they were also promoting, you know, like you need to know about the culture in the Middle East and everything. And okay, that's fine. There's a lot of, there's other people out there. I'm not the only one who's doing this and that's not a problem. So I dug a bit deeper and basically these people had copied some of my products word for word, like unbelievable. And even the coloring scheme and everything. I'm like, who does that? 
Like, that's just so bizarre. So anyway, I ended up blocking all of them because I'm like, no, I'm sorry, but no. Like, at least, you know, come on, be a little bit original and come up with your own idea. But they copied everything down to the price, to what we were offering. I'm like, this is just weird. It is weird, yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot you, did, you didn't decide to sue. <laughs> yeah. No. Block is, block is because in. also like then uh, when I looked into this further, I was like, who are these people? What are their credentials? And I couldn't find any credential. It didn't say they worked with clients from the Gulf for X amount of years. They've been here. Who were their clients? Uh, you know, had they been on any? Mm. I don't know. Had they had any exposure or whatever? There was none of that there. And I'm like, okay, like okay, anyone can claim to be an expert, but you also do need to have facts to back this up. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it's all well and good copying the products, but if you've never dealt with the clientele before, then how would you know? Yeah, yeah, agreed. I think we're all finding our way, aren't we? We're all learning to navigate. I mean, I can go on X or any of these other platforms, but what my feeling is, and I think Gary's right about, and you've agreed anyway about the curation aspect and spending time to mean that you actually, I'm just not willing to put that time and energy into a platform that I really think is, for me personally, not for us as the Quantum Bridge, because it's been incredibly good at actually finding other guests, like LinkedIn has been great for me and for us in that respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we find well, some I mean, great I people, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, again, for me, I think LinkedIn is a very professional platform, you know, and I think it's a great platform to find different people. I mean, that's that again, saying that a lot of people also say that about Twitter and they say we've been on Twitter for a long time and we prefer that. But again, I think it all comes down to who you follow, how you curate your feed, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, you know. It definitely... Um... <clears throat> I mean, I guess I've used it a lot as a learning tool. So when I first went on there, I would get triggered and I would sort of have a rant about something. And then I start to notice, I think, I think this is designed to trigger me with these mm. big clips or whatever. And I was like, how do I work on myself so I don't get so triggered so I can disconnect from this stuff? So I use it a lot like that. Also, the... When you get, or you know, negative comments or something, that there is power in disengaging, not feeding the beast, the machine. You know, yeah. I, it's like you think well, I don't have to get the last word. I don't. This guy is probably some kind of an energy vampire. You know, he just wants to drain me, keep me here arguing. And you think, no, I'm actually going to walk away. I, that is a winning move rather than just draining yourself. <laughs> You just and I've learned a lot of that. I I actually use it as an observational tool a lot. I just monitor. I see where are people at. Where is the collective? Do I see people moving out of that fear space, getting bored of the uh, the doom and gloom? And I do see that. I, I think okay, we're shifting a little bit now. Okay, there's, there's there's other groups that are still stuck, but I can see that now. I mean, today it was very interesting. There's, people are getting that creativity bug that they, they want to do something more with their lives. And I can see that swelling up now. It's So there's a lot you can take from that. I, I, I think, again, also, there's a lot, um, there's a lot that you can learn from it. You mm -hmm. know, there's, I, I think that's the beauty with, with social media now. We never used to have, we never had access to this content. We used to have books before and, and the books you had to buy, or okay, you got them maybe from the library, but that didn't mean you could discover a lot of new things. Like now you can discover so many new interesting people or new strategies. And, um, you know, you can find, I don't know, so many great business tools, I think, that mm -hmm. we never used to have. So, so it's a really brilliant tool, I think, to also help yourself educate yourself i mean if you look at youtube for example i mean you can find a tutorial for anything like i don't know you can't you can't figure out how to untie the knot or yeah. something or to solve a rubik's cube i bet you there's a video there who will explain you how you can yeah. do it which again is actually brilliant because you never used to have that because before when i was a kid you had to either somebody had to know in your family or you were kind of like oh well how are you going to find out 
Yeah. yeah. I saved myself some money on a plumber once by fixing the toilet from a YouTube video. <laughs> I thought, let me, let me just have a look and have a go. And uh, it worked. Yeah, so it was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think also as we all move into that area more of being not out of fear, but being more self-sufficient as an empowerment move rather than a fear-based move yeah. as such. I think the things of, of things like um, solar energy, whatever it might be, something that actually can really bring a profound effect to your, your property, picking up these new skill sets, even if it's just how to uh, better protect uh, apps that you have, certainly those that have any um, crypto or money on them or whatever. Um, you know, and again, not because you're doing it from a space vault, I have to do this, it's it's all doom and gloom and terrible, but just from, look, it would be sensible if for things that involve finances, I look at better ways of, of protecting and using those those apps or those tools. And it is, as you both rightly say, it's all available. Um, mm. So there are what what I think that the thing that has come with these great disadvantages that we've touched on about how we can be made to feel or, or at least how it can try to make us feel. And I think less and less that will happen anyway. But I think that the key here is that, that um, you're going to have those two ends of the spectrum. You've got this amazing resource now um, and it can be not just used for good or bad, but you can actually tune into it at a certain frequency or level that, yeah. that means that's what you get. Mm. Yeah, 100%. I would I would agree. So I think if you use it wisely and you're, you're conscious of what it does to you, and I think that's another skill that you have to develop to observe what certain things do to you. And then if you pay attention to that, I think it can be very, uh, very, very good tool. I mean, certainly in terms of like advertising and selling things online, you know, it's never been as easy as it is now to That's run right. a business yeah. online and look at all these people that travel around the world and work from their laptop. I mean, that's great, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, agreed. It, it's it's opened up incredible things and will continue to do that probably exponentially now. We just all have to be guarded about the fact that for many of us, and I'm not bringing you into this necessarily, Karina, but certainly for Gary and I, you know, we grew up in a world that until we were probably well into our 30s and maybe into our 40s, this wasn't how we were used to living at all, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just discernment, I think, is a real key here. It's so easy to be swept up into it and get diverted or somebody sends you a video link and that takes you down a rabbit hole that really is no good for you, that it's eating your time, your energy uh, and so on. And just like with everything else, where we sort of gradually recognise what is good for us and what isn't maybe quite so uh, good for us, it's just another area where... I think our discernment will kick in. It's just that this thing, this area, this digital world has moved moved on so fast for most of yeah. us. That's mm. the other thing. When mm. you've got AI and things like that, we can spend a lot of time arguing with, with bots that we're not aware yeah. of, you know. So, yeah. You know, it's a machine. True. Why did True. You... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, you see a lot of these viral videos. There was one the other day. Um, we actually had a bit of traction on one of the posts I did Casper so oh excellent yeah, yeah. Oh. we had quite a lot of likes because it was just on a video and I said look it's it's fake it, it, it's it's actors it's staged and it's there to create division and cause you know trigger people and it's not yeah you have yeah. to learn not to get, get get triggered again or to see some of the, what the agendas are at play here you know, and a lot of detachment as well as discernment you know I'd and like. I, I suppose we're coming up near the end of this. It's always are, nice yeah. to have you on, Karina, and you're always welcome back. You're a real friend of the show and very supportive, by the way. So just to say, you know, the digital world and meme and whatever for us has got us to know each other, got us to do these videos, enabled us to have to and fro on formats like LinkedIn that have always been, for me, very positive, any interaction with you. Uh, and anybody from your company, by the way, as well. Ability, and we will do it again to put in the show more here, information about you and your company and all those things. So, you know, there is a, I think sometimes we do have to applaud the positives because it's very easy to look at the negatives because they are more 
salacious they, they they do get you sort of involved more in a way and they're the things that we all want to talk about because in a way they're it's just like bad news sells newspapers and all of that stuff but you know so much good is coming from this and such an awakening across the world mm. um, is happening and it, and I think it's you know this is a testament to that the people we have on uh, and the voices that we get to have heard and the people that you know are becoming friends of ours so I think it's nice to sort of, we don't have to end this second, but I think it's nice to sort of sum up in that way. I don't know how you feel about that, Karina. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I think there's, um, like, I've met some some great people on, on some of the platforms that I would have never met otherwise. And, um, and also, I think I learned a great deal, which, you know, which was something I think that was a bit unexpected. So, yeah, I, I definitely think it's you have to just take it with a pinch of salt and um, and use it to your advantage. Yeah, use it to your advantage. And the other, you know, we, it, it's just great that we've been able to get this this relationship. But the key thing that I've seen and taken from this as well as our channel and having you on and having others on, which is all lovely, is the way that all those people have blossomed or further blossomed in their own right. Like you seem much more comfortable. Maybe that's just with us now because you know us a bit more. But I see you doing a lot more video work, uh, a lot more engaging in that way since our first videos, or I feel at least I have. And I think, you know, hopefully, even if we're 1% of helping you on that journey, that's a lovely thing, you know. 100 percent i agree i think and uh, i think that's a very nice note to end and say you know the support doesn't have to be limited just to the outside world i think it can translate into the online world yeah yeah precisely well you're welcome back anytime and thank you i think that's a really enlightening conversation to talk about these sides but always to end on a on an uplifting note because that's what we're we're all about and here to do gary is there anything you want to do and to sum up no, I think that's it. You both summed up very well. I think, like we said, it's a great tool that can be used for good. And without it, it wouldn't. I don't think our channel would be as international as it as it is. We've had yeah. we made connections all around the world, and that helps again show what we wanted to do. That it's not just you know UK or America. It is a global awakening. So we try and show that and this these tools have allowed us to do that so. yeah that's brilliant yeah. long may it keep going <laughs> yeah long yes. may it continue karina we hope to see you again soon but for now thank, thank you, so you for much. your time and we will make sure we put your information in and i would urge people um to to contact you and engage with you and be nice to you yes <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> take care so from the quantum bridge for this time bye-bye Thank you so much. Bye-bye.